Hello, this is uh, lecture two about the collects problem or the collects conjecture, also called the 3x plus 1 problem. And this class will be divided in two parts. The first one uh, will be this one, and um, we'll be talking about a paper at Grandal called On the 3x plus 1 problem. Of 1978. Okay, so there, there are two nice results in Crandall's paper. The first one we will present this in part one, and the second one in a shorter class and a shorter lecture um, in part two. Okay, so the main result of this class is the following. Um, there is some constant A positive such that for alpha equals to 1 over 9 plus 3 e times log 2, which is basically like dot zero eight four dot. Uh, we have that is function pi of x, which uh, is different than uh, um, um, the one I defined in the previous class. But this one is the integers less or equal than s, um, integers uh, um, greater or equal than 1, less or equal than x, with total stopping time uh, finite. This is greater or equal, so this is the cardinality of this set. It's greater or equal than a x to the power alpha. Okay, so in Crandall's paper, he gives an implicit alpha, but if you work, if you work through the computations, you can see that you can take alpha. Probably this is the best you can take with his approach. Alpha equals this uh, uh, small number. Okay, so this works for every x greater equal than 1. Okay, so I'm counting the integers up to x such that they indeed reach 1 when you iterate the collax map. Uh, so we call, so let's, uh, so that's the theorem I'm going to prove. So we call that, that the total stopping time is just the minimum of the case greater or equal than 1, such that uh, ck of n equals 1. And if there is no such ck, such k, then this is defined to be infinity. Okay? So if the set is empty, then the minimum is infinity. Okay. Uh, So, as I said in the previous class, uh, dealing with the total stopping time is harder than dealing with the um, stopping time because of several issues, um, and we will see some of these issues in this class. Okay. Okay. So let's make a definition. And that's a theorem that we, we would like to show. So let's make a, uh, a definition. And the definition is going to be the following. So first I will define odd to be not only a word meaning odd number, but also the, the set itself. And I will define uh, speed up version of the collex map. So so the collex map here we call that the collex map here was C of n was n over two if n even and three n plus one over two 
and on. Okay, that was the collapse map. So I want to find a speed up version of this, of this, which is S of n, which we'll call S. Um, and that will be uh, 3n plus 1 divided by 2 to the e of n. And then we'll define this only for n odd. Okay, so the collapse map, basically what, what the collapse map, the, 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 the difficult part here is to understand the iteration of the collapse map in odd numbers, because if it's even, you're going to divide this even number up to, up, you divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, until you get to an odd number, okay? So in some way you can try to restrict the, the, the dynamics to the odd numbers, and that's what we're doing here. And E of n is defined as the max of the L is greater than or equal to 1, such that 2 to the L divides 3n plus 1. Okay? So n is so on, so I multiply by 3 add 1, that's what we're supposed to do, then I divide by the largest power of 2 available. Okay? So that's what I call speed up version of the collapse map. Okay? And let me also define the trajectory of a certain m. If I give you an odd number m, I define the trajectory as s of m, s squared of m, up to a certain point s k of m, let's say s i of m. And it continues, and it will stop at 1, if, well, S reaches 1 at some point, or TM we just go indefinitely, if you never reach 1. So the collapse conjecture now is equivalent to the statement that uh, S always reaches 1, and if you notice, if you apply S to 1, you will also get 1. So 1 is the fixed point, and the collapse map is saying that, that for any integer, you iterate the map over this integer and you converge to this fixed point. Okay? In finite time. Well, if you converge to this fixed point in the, the, the polity of the natural numbers, you will then converge in finite time. Okay? And then we define the height of m as the cardinality of tm. So now the collapse conjecture is equivalent to the statement that the height of n is finite for every natural number. Uh, odd. Okay. But that's the approach of Crandall here. And one thing you, noted, you note is the following. It's a nice observation. Which is the following. So... Tejas paper, you can use the previous lecture, which is about the Tejas paper. Um, uh, that Tejas paper shows that if you take the inf or the minimum in Tm and you divide by m, sorry, t minimum of Tm, and that's going to be less than m for almost all odd M. So for almost all odd M, we have that the minimum and the trajectory of Tm is less than M. So, uh, um, so Tejas paper indeed implies this. So you can do it very simple. I mean, it's just, you just realize that it does. So you don't even need to introduce uh, the calculations. But you note that if you take the max of Tm divided by m. That's unbounded. Okay. And that's because if you take m equals 2 to the k minus 1, then Sj of m is just 3 to the j 2 to the k minus j 
minus 1. I was just checking if, uh, if it was recording. So, so you realize that, that the max of Tm divided by m is actually greater or equal than um, 3 to the k minus 1 times uh, 2 minus 1 divided by 2 to the k minus 1 and that's greater than 3 halves to the power of k minus 1. Okay? So if you take k to infinity or m to infinity, this goes to infinity. And as a problem, as a problem, I will, if you want to play with the same, the problem that I will leave it to you is the following. Um, it's, it's not that hard to show. Uh, simple argument show that for any zero less than beta less or equal than log on base two or three, there is some sequences n k and j k going to infinity such that s to the dk applied in nk is roughly just nk to the beta. Okay, just roughly nk to the beta. That's the problem. It's not hard to show using this, this idea here. So if you divide uh, s to the jk divided by um, uh, um, nk, you get here beta minus 1, and this log on base 2 of 3 is a number greater than 1, so you indeed get some uh, uh, power growth for some of the iterates, okay? And you can have any power between 0 and log of 3 um, base 2. Okay? Okay. So now what tell us, uh, what, uh, sorry, Kando wants to do is in some way he wants to exactly know what happens, uh, what are the necessary and sufficient conditions for a certain sequence to go back to one in finite time. And some way to do this, you want to kind of uh, invert the iterates of the of the map S. So in this sense, we want to define the following function. Functions. So, definition. So, we define the function BA of n as 2 to the a n minus 1 over 3. Okay, so this is a uh, function on the odd numbers, and let's say n odd. Okay, so it's not guaranteed that whenever you put an odd number here, this is going to be divisible by 3. That means that this function can actually map a odd number to a rational number, okay? But nevertheless, well, we define this like this, because if b a of n is actually an integer, if that is an integer, then, then it must be odd, because uh, 3 b a, so let me write that. So if uh, b a n is an integer, then it must be odd. B 
because 3ba n plus 1 equals 2 to the a. So this is even. So a is greater than equal to 1. So this is even. So therefore, this thing here must be odd. So b a of n has to be odd if it is an integer. OK. And then also you see, so it is odd. So if it is an integer, it is odd. And if you apply to it, you get exactly n because n is odd. So in some way, um, um, if you restrict to the set, to the range of the... So, so in some way, ba is inverting s. OK, that's the idea. And then from this we define this other. So if, whenever you have a sequence um, that we denote like this, so this is a sequence of length j. So what I would denote with decreasing uh, indexes. Um, whenever we have such a sequence, we can define v of a or or n, but I also denote as b of a j a j minus 1, a 1 of n, that is, will be just the composition of these maps. Applied in n. Okay? So again, it's not guaranteed that this is going to be a integer, but there are circumstances that uh, this happens, and that's the claim for the next lemma. Um, so to not screw up the, 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 the notes that I'll be posting on my website, I will follow the, the enumeration of my notes. And this is uh, in my notes what I called lemma 10. Okay. So if n so let n be odd and assume b of aj a1 of n is an integer. Then um, every single one in the middle is, is actually an odd integer for i equals 1 to j. And since they are all the integers, you can apply s. And when it does, it simply removes one of the indexes. Okay? Well, this part here is almost trivial because uh, we just did it here. Because if, if n is equal to this guy here, was this guy, it will be the same computation. So, this identity here, it just follows directly from what we, uh, more or less what we did before. Um, uh, we just have to, have to realize all the other ones. Okay, so proof. The proof is uh, not a complicated. Well, if this guy here is a integer, then by this relation here, we would be saying that 3 b uh, a j dot a 1 of n plus 1 equals 2 to the a j b of a j minus 1 dot, dot a 1 of n by definition. Well, this is a multiple of 2. So if this is an integer, okay, uh, I conclude that this guy here is a integer as well. So this guy has to be an integer. Because this guy is, the assumption is that this guy is an integer. Okay, but by construction, if you do any bi b1 of n, that has to be, has to belong to this set. So it has to be an integer divided by 3 to the i. So I'm saying that we have an integer here, 
which uh, we have a number which is an integer divided by 3 to the j minus 1. This is j minus 1. And then you multiply by a power of 2 and you get an integer. Well, the only way that this happens is that this guy here is itself a integer. So now we can apply induction. So you just apply the standard inductive argument. So you just apply an induction argument. So we're not do here. Then by induction you have that all of these guys are integer for i equals one to n. Okay. Well, they have to be odd because the same argument as before. Three times uh, any uh, this guy plus one is this guy. Well, this guy is now an integer, so this is an even integer. That means that this guy must be an odd integer. So, and by the same argument as before, all these guys are actually odd. Okay, and that finishes uh, the proof. Okay. Now I want to make two observations. And the first observation is that you can easily uh, um, uh, realize that if m equals some b of aj a1 of 1, so 1 is odd, so it's great, so it's part of the statement of the lemma. So if this guy is a integer, and so if this is an integer and a1 is greater than 2, okay, then you look to the trajectory of m that has to be exactly this one. Okay, so height of m equals j. So what I'm saying is that not only, well, we know that if, if we apply s to this guy, oh, this is j minus 1, not j. So if I apply s to this guy, I get the next one, and so on. This, this we know. And, but why this thing has length j? So why, why not one of these numbers here uh, is 1? And the reason why is very simple, because if if uh, um, so first of all, if this is an integer, then by the previous lemma, all these guys here are odd integers, so I can apply the function s on them. Uh, so I just need to prove that no no one of these guys here is one. And this is easy to prove because if one of these guys, is 1, well, that means that by definition that uh, 3 this is by definition, by the definition of the function this is happening, so if this guy is 1, then this thing here is it's just 4, okay, but this guy here is an odd number, so the only solution to this is, is that ai is 1, 
is 2, sorry, then ai is 2, and the next one, which is this guy, is also 1. So then you can use induction to conclude that b of a1 of 1 is 1. Okay, but that's the same to say that that is 2 to the power a1 equals 4, but a1 is greater than 2 by assumption, which is an absurd. Okay, so no, these guys is 1, so indeed that's exactly the trajectory of m. So that was the whole point of these functions. I mean, whenever you have an m, which is a, happens to be an integer of this form, starting with a sequence with, with a1 greater than 2, then you know exactly what's going to be the trajectory. The trajectory is going to be this. Okay. Okay, and actually this goes back and forth. So, and that's the, the, the content of the next lemma. Lemma 11. And lemma 11 is saying, well, let's define, let G be the following set. Um, Yes, so the following set, a set of AJs, A1s, this is I, such that, so uh, in principle it depends on J, such so that A1 is greater than 2, and um, 2 to the A1 is, um, is, uh, congruent to 4 or 7 mod 9. The other condition is 2 to the ai b ai minus 1 up to a1 of 1 is congruent to 4 or 7 mod 9. And this holds for uh, i greater or equal to 2, less or equal to, uh, strictly less than g. Okay. And the third condition, so let me, so this is a condition, we we'll have these conditions here. And the third condition is that uh, the last one, which is 2 to the aj, B A J minus one dot 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 A one A one one is congruent to one four or seven mod nine. Okay. So the last condition is basically saying that's just congruent to one mod three, but I want you to keep everything in mod nine. Okay, so the find is set. Then the set uh of A's um, of length J such that uh, B A J A one of one is an integer and A one is greater than two is exactly J. Okay. Yes. And there is something more, moreover. And there is a quantitative estimate on the elements, on the number of elements and gj, the cardinality of the a's and g, such that aj plus a1 is. Uh, less or equal than some number z 
is greater or equal than 2z minus 2 over 6j, everything to the power j. Okay, so that's the lemma. That's the lemma you want to prove. Let me prove it here. So note that um, um, well, let me note that later after after yes after the improved this lemma. Okay, so let's prove, let's prove, so we have to prove that a certain set equals the other, and then we have to prove a certain inequality. So a certain set equals the other, and a certain inequality. Okay, so how can you prove that a certain set equals the other? So let's prove first that um, um, this guy is contained in T2. Let's prove that first. Okay. So suppose I have a set which has a, a, a uh, uh, this set here. So if this is an integer by the previous lemma, then all the, 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 the partial guys here will be odd integers and the height of this will be exactly uh, uh, j. Um, so now I have to show the, the equivalences. So for instance, we do have that 3 by definition a1 of 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2 to the ai e of ai minus 1 for the dot a1 of 1 and this holds for i equals um, 1 to j with the assumption here uh, um, it is supposed to be i from 2 to j and then we have the, the very uh, 3 b a1 plus 1 equals to 2 a1 okay. we do have this Okay, so if I take mod 3 in both sides, okay, I got that this guy is congruent to 1 mod 3, and this guy is congruent to 1 mod 3. But being congruent to 1 mod 3 is exactly the same to say that this is congruent to 1, 4, or 7 mod 3, mod 9, and this is congruent to 1, 4, or 7 mod 9. So I conclude that 1 equals to 2 to the ai, Sorry, 1, 4, or 7, mod 9, mod 9, and we also have 1, 4, 
or seven is congruent to two to the a one mod nine. Okay. So this is almost all uh, the statements we want, but we do want to eliminate uh, for and this is for i from two to j. Okay. So for uh, i between, for, for, for this case, for i uh, between 2 and j minus 1, and for this guy, I want to eliminate to be congruent to 1. I want to eliminate that. Okay? So, oh well, how can we do it? We we'll just iterate one more time these two identities here. So we do know that uh, this, if you iterate one more time here, so basically multiplying by 3 and adding 2 to the ai, so I have 9 b ai a11 one, one, plus 2 to the ai plus 1, that is equal to 2 to the ai 3 b ai minus 1 a101 one, one, plus 1, and that is equal to 2 to the ai plus ai minus 1 b ai minus 2. A1 of 1. Uh, yes, that's what we have. <clears throat> so if I take mod 9, and let's do for the audio as well. Uh, it equals 2 to A1. Oh no, I don't need to do it for the other, okay. This thing here works for i equals 3, because I have minus 2 here, up to j. Okay. Yes. So, so, that's, so, so this works for every i up to 3 up to j. If I put 3 here, I get a1. So let me separate this a1 here. So it's when i equals 3. So I get 9, b, a3, a2, a1 of 1, plus 2, 2, to a3, plus 1 equals 2, 2, a3, plus a2, b of a1 of 1, which I will... Uh, mm, no, that's not the one I want to do. Sorry. Let's continue with three. Um, I want to iterate one more time uh, this thing here. Yes, so I want to iterate one more time this thing here. So I got 9, 3, B, A, 1, plus 1. Oh, sorry. I want to, sorry, I want to multiply this by, by, Three and add um, and add three. Yes, yes. So multiply this by three and add three. So uh, this is plus one. So add a three. So plus three. Sorry. So multiply everything by uh, three. Let me, let me do it carefully. So multiply, uh, so I want to know what's 3 b a 1 plus 1. Um, um, what, what I want to do is to, um, I think I want to do what it is exactly. Yeah, so, so let's, let's do this first, and then we'll go back to this one here. So I want to eliminate uh, congruence to 1 mod 9. So I just take mod 9 here, and I get... Okay, so that's what I get, mod 9. Okay, so this guy here cannot be 1 mod 9. Uh, oh, sorry, this is not 1, this is, uh, 
you multiply this by 3 and add i. Sorry, multiply by 3 and add 2 to the i. So this is the 3, sorry. 2 to the ai. You multiply everything by 3 and add it 2 to the ai. So to get this, multiply everything by 3, get a 3 here and add it 2. Okay. So when you do mod 9, you get this. So this cannot be, so this guy here is not 1 mod 9. Because if it was, then that would imply that 3 is congruent to 1 mod 9, because you could, can, could cancel this with that, which is not possible. So, okay, so we, we do eliminate this thing. And you, oh, okay, so if you realize that if you would apply this guy here for i equals 2, if you iterate this guy here uh, one more time for i equals uh, 2, so we get that, um, so this guy here for i equals 2. So we get 3 v a 2 a 1, well, 1 plus 1 equals 2 a 2 b of a 1 of 1. Okay. Um, so uh, what I want to do is I want to multiply this so I get 9. Um, uh, what I want to do is I want to multiply, yes, 2 a 1, 1, plus 3, plus, so I multiply this by 3 and add 2 to the a2. So that's going to be 2 to the a2, 3 b a 1 of 1 plus 1, okay, and then by definition this is 2 to the a2, 2 to the a1, and again the same calculation, if you do mod 9, then this part here vanishes, and then you cannot have 2 to the ai be congruent to 1 mod 9, because that wouldn't satisfy this equation, okay, so that shows the lemma. Okay, that shows that shows uh, the lemma. Okay, we're just a bit confused uh, when to eliminate this one here from this part, but it's actually simple just to iterate this thing for i equals two. Okay, so so okay, so we get to a point where oh, so that that doesn't conclude the lemma. We still have the 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 inequality to show. Let's show this inequality, and then that finishes the lemma. Okay, so how can we show this inequality? This inequality is actually not, not hard to show. Okay. Um, so the only thing you have to realize is since a1 is greater than 2, so the cardinality of the a's in gj, such that aj plus a1 is greater or equal than z, is actually greater or equal than such that a1 minus 2 is greater or equal than z minus 2. Oh, it's less or equal, sorry. Uh, oh, this is less or equal, sorry. Okay, less or equal than z minus 2 over j, and ai is less or equal than z minus 2 over j. Okay, and why is that the case? Because if these inequalities are satisfied, then when you sum all the variables and you bound each one by these bounds, and then you have to make a sum, and then when you do the sum, you get exactly z. So if that is true, then this is true. Okay, so easy to show. Um, okay, so what that means, well, um, so suppose, um, suppose we take a a1, well, we know that 2 to the a1 has to be congruent to 4 or 7 mod 9, okay? So that happens if and only if if a1 
is congruent to um, two or three mod six. Okay. So so two to the a one is four or seven mod nine, if and only if a one is two or three mod six. Again, a simple thing you can you can do. Okay. Okay, it's just because 2 to the power 6 is uh, 64, which is 1 mod 9. If you, then you, you use that to prove this. Okay? So, so that means that at every 6, every, uh, uh, six consecutive integers, at least 2, exactly 2, satisfy this condition. So, so the cardinality of the A's in GJ such that a1 minus 2 is less than or equal to c minus 2 over j, that is greater or equal than 2 over 6, that's the ratio, uh, um, times the z minus 2 over j, and you take the integer part. Yeah, actually, you realize that this is actually just, uh, you can do this. Okay. So you take this ratio here, divide by 6, and it's two of them uh, are greater or equal. So this is uh, not hard to see. Okay. Well, the same happens for the other ones. Once you choose A1, then you have to choose A2, and A2 has to satisfy of this condition, so so if a one is chosen, then what you have by this condition is that two to the a one b um, sorry two to a two b a one or one has to be four or seven mod nine. Okay, and then you realize that for any number, any given b a one of one, any of these numbers, there is exactly two solutions. Maybe not two or three mod six, but exactly two solutions. Uh, there are exactly two solutions. For a two mod six. Exactly two. That means that the same bound applies to each one of these, uh, to, to a two as well. So you can do an induction argument again. Okay. So you do an induction argument, and that's my three dots here, induction, and a two gets the very last, and the very last, which will be, uh, uh, um, two gets the very last, which will be something like uh, two to the uh, aj, b aj minus one, a one of one, the very last can be actually congruent to one, four, or seven, mod uh, nine, but this will give you just one and more uh, things. So a better ratio than 2 over 6 will give you 3 over 6. So you can drop this one and you still get the same now. So in the end, you just get this thing to the power j. Okay. So, so, so this part here, you can include that the cardinality of a j is such that a1 minus 2 is less than so equal to z minus 2 over j. And a2 less or equal than z minus 2 over j is greater or equal than this thing, which is 2 z minus 2 over 6j squared. 
Okay. Uh, and then by induction, you will get to this next part. So a final induction to the final part, you, you have this tiny little technicality. But uh, in, in the final uh, step, you conclude that uh, um, that less or equal uh, than Z is greater or equal than this thing. to the power j, okay? Yeah. Okay, and that finishes the lemma. Okay, so why what are we doing these things? Um, basically, what you have to observe is that whenever you have an integer m, uh, such that that integer has height j, let's say, So you observe the following, that uh, m odd and height of m equals j, okay, let's say, uh, yes, this set is exactly equal to the set of um, um, uh, the set of so if this happens okay then there exists a sequence a j a1 um, such that a unique such that uh, m is actually a b of a one of one. Okay, now I will leave this as a problem for you. It's not hard to realize. Okay. But everything we did here um, is not hard to show that uh, there exists one. Well, I mean, if if it's, if it if the height is two, so it's just uh, some guy that he maps to one, then uh, yeah. So, for instance, an example. So suppose it's just uh, s of m, and then one. That is, the height of the guy is two. Okay. So that means that well, what is s of m? S of m, s is squared of m. This is equal to one, but this is just uh, 3s of m plus 1 divided by 2 to em. Okay? So then we realize that s of m, um, I'm sorry, f, e of s of m. Okay? Then you realize that s of m is just 2 to some power, let's say a, uh, let's say a1, uh, minus 1 divided by 3 where a1 is e of s of m. But that's nothing but just b a1 of 1. Okay? So this guy is a b a1. And 1. Okay? And since uh, uh, this is not 1, b a1 uh, uh, which is S, S of M is not 1, and um, this A1 must be greater than 2. So, we can put here A1 greater than 2. Okay. 
So, and this is just, so this is a problem, and this is just uh, how you, you can go about it, okay? And this A1 has to be unique. So, maybe first you can just show uniqueness, and then you can show the existence. And uniqueness is also not hard. Okay. So, uh, so now I will prove a theorem, I will state and prove a theorem, and that theorem can be used to prove, I will use to prove the main theorem of this class. Okay, so we are almost, almost there, and then we move to part two. Okay, I just, I just don't want to make those, these videos uh, too big, like, at most one hour, one hour and 50 minutes, 15 minutes. Otherwise it's uh, just too much, or uh, at least for me. So, theorem 12, according to my notes, which is the following. So, let me define these functions here. Pi 2 log g, which is just n odd, n less or equal than x, and it has height j. Okay, so recall that what I really want to measure is pi of x, which is any n integer greater or equal than 1, less or equal than x, such so that it has finite total stopping time. Okay, but these functions will help us to measure this, this other function. Okay, so then we have the following. Then for any c greater than 1, and this c will play a, a, a role next. Uh, we will choose a specific c greater than 1 to optimize the inequalities we will get. So for any c greater than 1, pi to the j of x is greater than log of base 2 of x to 1 over 3c e everything to the power j divided by j factor. Okay? So e is the Euler constant here. Okay, so basically what I'm saying for anything below 1 over 3 over e, 1 over 3 e, I can get certain inequality, and this will hold as long as x is greater or equal than 2 to the power, I guess it's 9c, 9c uh, divided by c minus 1, everything to the power j. Okay? So that's why c has to be greater than 1, because of this minus 1 here. Okay. This, this is again is like an auxiliary theorem to help proving the main result. Okay, so let me raise the board again. The proof is not intricate. The proof is actually pretty straightforward. So what we have so far, but I this problem here that I just put, uh, I know that pi tilde of x is nothing but the cardinality of the sequences in gj, uh, such that v a j a1 of 1 is less or equal than x. Because for each n which has height uh, j, I can find a sequence such that this uh, m or n equals to some of these bi's. Okay, and I know that uh, the set gj is exactly the set of the bi's, uh, which these are integers and this is greater than 1. So that's, that's why the previous lemma we just proved. Um, and one thing is also uh, easy to show, so let's say another problem for you. 
like those uh, simple problems by induction you can show. So for any of these functions, we always have a 2 to the sum divided by 3 to the j. Okay, This is easy to show by induction. So we use this bound. So instead of bounding b by x, we we'll bound this quantity by x. So we know that pi tilde j of x it will be greater or equal to the cardinality of the a's and g such that um, we take log on both sides here log on base 2, so a1 plus aj is uh, less or equal than log on base 2 of 3 times j plus log on base 2 of x. Okay, that's what we have. And the previous lemma also gave us a bound for this, but that would be our z. So the previous uh, uh, lemma gave us a bound for this. That's greater or equal to 2, the integer part of z minus 2 divided by 6j, everything to the power j. Okay, so that's our the z. So one, one thing we can do here is to bound this, this whole thing by uh, um, z minus 2 over 3j minus 2, everything to the power j. So this will be equal to, uh, so when I divide z by 3j, I will get, um, um, let me divide, so I get log on base 2 of x divided by 3j, that will be the main part. Okay, then I will, I will have other things like this thing, which is plus log on base 2 of 3 divided by 3, and uh, what else? I will also have um, minus 2 over 3j, and then we'll have a minus 2, everything to the power j. Okay? But j is greater than equal to 1, so we can do this and remove this guy. And this number here is roughly minus 2.45. So we can bound this whole thing by log of 2 of x over 3j minus 3, everything to the power j. Okay, and when is this greater or equal than log? On base 2. Since this is the main part, so whenever I divide this thing by a constant larger than 1, I should get a bound. This happens here if uh, we exactly have the bound we wanted, which is exactly um, x greater or equal than 2 to the 9 c over c minus 1 to the power j. Okay, so to finish next, we use the inequality of j to the power j is less than j factorial e to the power j to get that pi tilde j of x, if x is greater or equal than this, is greater than um, log on base 2 of x divided by 3 c e everything to the power j, 1 over j factorial, which is exactly the statement I did here if you move this factor here to the exponent of x, okay? So that concludes uh, the proof of the lemma of the theorem, and now we can move to the proof of the main theorem, theorem 8. So let me erase the board one more time. Let me erase everything, actually. So in Crandall, again, in Crandall paper, 
he gives an implicit constant in the main theorem, and then if you do computations uh, like I did, caring about the actual constants, etc., you can get the number, and I believe that's the best uh, constant you can get. So let's prove. So let's prove. And what was the theorem H, just to recall you? Theorem H was the statement that if I define pi of x equals the number of the n's last circular in x, any natural number last circular in x, such that the total stopping time of the collapse map, not the map S, is finite, that is greater or equal than some constant a and x to some the power alpha, okay? And we identify this power, power alpha in a moment. It's something like uh, 0 0.08. Okay. Um, so how do we translate this to a statement about uh, the function s? Well, it's easy. The only difference between the function s, which is the speed up collapse map and the collapse map, is that in the function s, we are dividing more by 2. Okay. So one thing easy to realize is that pi of x is just the sum of the a greater than equal to 0 of pi tilde of 2 to the minus ax, where pi tilde of x is dealing with the s function, is the n odd n less or equal than x um, um, height of n finite. That's just because if x is odd and x, uh, if n is odd and n has finite height, then any power of 2 times n also has finite height, and therefore finite total stopping time, and then you realize that this inequality holds. So if we show that pi tilde of x is greater than some a x to the alpha, that will show by substitution here that pi of x is greater or equal than the sum of a x to the alpha divided by 2 to the a alpha, a greater or equal than 0. Um, sorry, a greater or equal than Yeah, a greater or equal than 0. And this sum is just, um, uh, and this sum is just. Uh, 1 divided by, so this is just a um, 1 minus 2 to the power minus alpha times x to the alpha. Okay? So if I show a similar statement for pi tilde, I show the same statement for pi. Okay. So how can we show this thing for pi tilde? Well, again, we know what pi j is, so pi tilde of x will be a sum of j greater than or equal to 1 of pi tilde j of x, where pi tilde j of x is where the height equals j. Okay? So what do we do? We stop in a convenient j. We stop counting in a convenient j, which would be log and base 2 of x to a certain little power a, which I will tell you in a moment. So if uh, x is greater or equal than 2, so uh, convenient power a, so before I do, so let c be something greater than 1, that I will choose in a moment, this will be a fixed number, then if, um, then if uh, x is greater or equal than 2 to the 9c divided by c minus 1 to the j, for j equals 1 to log 2 of x to the a, okay, then I can say that pi tilde of x is greater or equal than the sum of j equals 1 to log <clears throat> base 2 of x to the a, 
of the bound we deduced before, which was log on base 2 of x 1 over 3 ce, everything to the j divided by j factorial. Okay, we could conclude this, which is a nicer sum. Okay, so what's the a? Well, it's clear that the a has to be the inverse of this number. So if a is c minus 1 over 9c, okay, so c is a number bigger than 1, so if I choose this, then any x greater or equal to 1 will satisfy this condition, because <clears throat> uh, the largest of these numbers will be when we put this guy here, Uh, yeah, because that has to be the largest of the numbers. Um, um, yes. Uh, and then when we put this, any x satisfies this. So as long so, so this will always be true for every x greater or equal to one. Okay. Of course, we have the condition that this summation is identically zero. Here, I'm not summating anything if this guy is not greater or equal than one, because I have to summate from stuff which is greater or equal than one. Okay. So keep in mind that this summation is zero when this is uh, smaller uh, than one. Okay. Okay. Um, so we do have this inequality, and this is the a. So, so if this is the a, we can replace the a, like replace the a by that number, and let me do some manipulations to make it look like this. So we have x to the a, so we have a c minus 1 over 3 times e. Let me put the big summation here. Let me put here pi to the little x greater or equal. Let me put the big summation here. Then we will have c minus 1 e over 3. And then we have log on base 2 of x to 1 over 3 c e. And if we multiply, we get exactly a, which is c minus 1 divided by 9 c. Yeah. To get it. And then here is the log on base 2 of x of 1 over 3 c e, this to the j divided by j factorial, from j equals 1 to that. Okay, that's what we have. This works for every x greater or equal to 1. So now you realize that the, the, I think the best choice here is to choose this thing equal 1. So we then choose c equals 1 plus. 3 over e. Okay? And therefore, 1 over 3 c e is 1 over, um, so it will be 3 e times this guy here, which is just 9 plus 3 e, which I will call beta. Okay? So then you realize that by choosing c equals that, this is greater or equal than j equals 1 to uh, log on base 2 of x to the beta, log on base 2 of x to the beta, j divided by j factor. Always remember that if this guy is less than 1, then this summation is 0, okay? Okay. Um, then I'm, I'm going to use a result of CAC, which says that it's, it's on this paper here, note, and um, partial summation sums of exponential series. Um, the known result where he shows that he proves this inequality here for every y greater or equal to 1.
for every y greater or equal than 1, we have this. Okay, this is the result of this paper. So I'm going to use this inequality here with y equals log of base 2 of x to the beta. Okay, in particular, e to the power y is going to be, well, log on base 2 of x to the beta is just log. So this is going to be just uh, x to beta divided by log 2 which is x to the alpha, okay? And that's by alpha, which the alpha is stated in the theorem. So alpha here should be uh, 1 over 9 plus 3e log 2, okay? Which, if you compute, is like 0 0.08. So because when I take exponential, I have to take... So when I don't... So my log here, when I don't put anything here, I mean the natural log. And when I put the base, I mean the log of that base. So this is log on base 2, but that log here is in the natural uh, base. Okay. So using this result, you can conclude that pi 2 log x is greater or equal to x to the alpha divided by 2 minus um, some um, minus something which is little o of uh, of one. That means it converges to zero when x converges to infinity, x to the alpha, and that will come from this part here. Okay, and that is greater or equal than uh, some constant x to the alpha okay and again i can only do this thing as long as x is great enough but then um, this part here so if x is large i can make this smaller than a half so in particular i can then put a constant here and make this better for every x greater or equal than one okay so you can even see that the constant is asymptotically to a half, but I think that's not uh, very much important. Okay. So you conclude that, and that finishes the proof. Okay. Okay. So part two will be the next class. Will be about uh, cycles. It will be a shorter video, maybe like thirty minutes long, uh, about the results of Crandall, the same paper, but about uh, bounding uh, the size of cycles based on the uh, uh, fractional, based on the continued fraction expansion of uh, uh, log of 3 in base 2, okay? See you next time.